All right, if you have been around here for any length of time, you know that I love my R6. It has changed everything about the way I shoot. I am a huge fan, which you can tell by all the videos I've done about it. However, there is one thing, one mistake that I have made with my R6 that you cannot fix later, and I wanna help you avoid it. The cool thing about an R6, any mirrorless camera, is it when you're shooting, you can look through the viewfinder and you can see what the image is gonna look like before you even take it. So if I'm adjusting and I'm changing my settings to make my exposure look better through the viewfinder, I can see like, oh, this needs, needs to be a little bit brighter. The negative side of this is that it is so easy to see. Sometimes when you're in those fast paced moments and you're not slowing down and really paying attention, you can make some setting adjustments that are dangerous and you don't even realize it. So this has happened to me several times on wedding days, during engagement sessions, and I think once during a family shoot. I was moving and working and shooting too fast and I didn't realize, for a lot of different reasons, I'll get into in a second, I didn't realize that my shutter, I had put placed my shutter too low. So I was shooting with a shutter that really made it possible for me to have some camera shake issues. So when I'm shooting, I'm setting my aperture dependent upon what I need as far as how many people I'm photographing and really it's determined by what style I'm going for. So my aperture is de determining my style and that's the first thing that I set and it is truly like set it and forget it. So if I'm gonna start doing some portraits in a wide open field and I wanna have my aperture at 2.0, which is very common for me, then my aperture is set at 2.0 and I'm probably honestly not gonna change that. Then I have my ISO as low as possible. Once I have that set, I'm not gonna change that either. So what happens is once I have aperture set and ISO set, those two settings I'm not thinking about. So I am just shooting and I'm looking through my viewfinder and I'm adjusting my shutter to what looks great while focusing on posing and composition and engaging with clients. And so when you think, how could you let this happen? It's because I am not obsessing over my settings. I know they're in a, de a decent place. They're in a great place to have a foundation and then I make my shutter adjustments from there. So if I'm shooting and I'm adjusting and I have a drastic change in light, sometimes if I'm on a roll, I just adjust my shutter and I'm not paying attention the way I used to because I don't have to check my photos or my meter exactly like I used to with mirrorless versus a DSLR. So what happens is that my shutter is unknowingly too low. I'm moving too fast, I'm not paying attention, but it looks great through my viewfinder. It looks like I'm capturing exactly what I want, but because I can see what the final product is gonna look like before I even take the photo, I'm not taking a photo and then reviewing it on my camera like I used to with my Mark IV. I don't need to do that anymore. So the scary thing is, if this happens, I don't know that it's happened until I get home and I'm uploading my photos and I zoom in and I realize these are not sharp. These are slightly out of focus. What is wrong? And then I look at my settings and I realize, shoot, it happened again. My shutter was too low. There's two reasons why I think this happens and why I'm not aware of it. I mean, I've been shooting 13 years. I've never had this problem before until the R6. And I wouldn't say it's a common problem, but it is something that has happened enough times that I'm taking note and I'm very careful about it now. The two reasons why I think this is happening is one, I am paying more attention about what I want the look to be through my viewfinder and I'm making adjustments and I'm not paying attention and slowing down and really looking at my settings the way I used to when I'd have to take a photo and then look at the back or take a photo and really pay attention to my meter with my DSLR in the past. Now, I'm just looking through my viewfinder, I'm making adjustments, I'm seeing what I want, and then I'm capturing the photo. And sometimes that is happening so quickly that I'm not paying attention to how careful I am with my shutter speed. The second reason I think that this is happening is because with mirrorless, I'm not hearing the length of the shutter the way I used to with a DSLR. If I was shooting at 1 50th of a second, 1 40th of a second, normally I could hear that with my Mark IV. Like I could just feel it when I took it and it would be like a red flag. Like, whoa, 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 what am I doing? Like, I gotta fix this. And with the mirrorless setup with an R6, I don't hear that same sound. It's not as, it's not like a red flag. I don't have this warning going off from that sound. And so there's nothing to make me aware of a slight camera shake issue because my shutter's too low until I get back home. And you cannot fix that later. So it's almost like um, the thing I love the most about the R6 and the thing I love most about mirrorless shooting has a negative side to it if you're not aware of that. And Thankfully, I've never butchered a full session. I've never gone home from a wedding and like 
lost all the portraits to this issue, but I have lost a few things here and there because I just, I didn't have a tack sharp version. Now I am an overshooter. And so a lot of times when this happens, I take so many photos that one photo, I was still enough to get the shot that I wanted. So I've never been fully devastated by this mistake, but I can tell you that if you're a photographer just getting the hang of this, just getting the hang of shooting, this could be a mistake that really, really discourages you and can really ruin an entire session without you knowing it. Whenever this issue has come about, I try to pay attention to like, how did I get here, right? How did, how did I end up in a situation where I didn't realize that my shutter was too low? Um, and a lot of times it goes back to the pace of the session. I could look back and see that was a part of the session where I was overwhelmed and I was moving really fast. Maybe someone, maybe dad didn't seem like he was super engaged with the family portraits, or maybe the groom was like not acting like he was into it. And I was so worried about like, Hey, let's make it a good time. And I didn't really pay attention to my settings. Knowing that, and knowing that that's a pattern, I've started paying more attention to when I start to have that anxious uptight, I'm shooting really fast kind of feeling. Cause I know there's a risk. There's a higher risk in those moments for me to make this issue occur again. So something I've done, not just paying attention to the way I feel physically and emotionally when I'm shooting and the speed at which I'm shooting, I'm paying attention to those things. So I'm more aware, but practically, and from a technical perspective, the way that I combat avoiding this issue is I've been increasing my ISO just a little bit. Some people will say when they're watching KJ all access, which is basically our behind the scenes membership that allows photographers to watch me do my sessions and my weddings behind the scenes. When they're watching me shoot these wedding days, um, sometimes people will say, Caitlin, why was your ISO at 200? Why wouldn't you have it the lowest possible? If I'm being completely honest, the difference between ISO at hundred and ISO at like 250, you could never tell that like you could never tell that difference. So in my mind, I've been shooting a little bit more towards the 250 range with ISO because that little extra boost of light sensitivity, is going to protect me from needing to get my shutter lower on accident and having camera shake issues that I was unaware of. So I've been keeping my ISO just a tad higher to avoid potentially protecting myself from the issue of shooting with a shutter that is too low with a mirrorless camera. So some people would say like, if you're shooting slower, this should never be a problem, right? And you're right. If you, if you are really paying attention to your settings, this is a common thing to just notice and fix. But I've found that even as an experienced shooter, it has been a learning curve for me to not just depend on seeing what I want to see through the viewfinder of a mirrorless camera, but still also paying attention to settings in while I'm in the act of shooting. So if this is not a problem for you, Great. Good on you. That's awesome. Move on to the next R6 video in our lineup and our playlist. But if this is something that you haven't fully understood, I hope this is helpful. Um, so we have new videos every single Thursday. If you haven't already like, and subscribe so that you can see more in the future. And thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Bye.